Hi there YouTube and welcome to Tech Travers. So you have just received your new AYN Odin device that you have been waiting months for and now you're sitting there wondering where to start. Well, that actually depends on what your plan is with the Odin. Are you planning to stream games from other devices in your house? Or do you plan to play your backlog of retro games that have been laying there waiting for you to pick them up again? Or maybe you're into Android gaming and you want to play the latest and greatest from the Google Play Store. Either way, I thought I would show you how to start doing all this and many other things in this AYN Odin how to start gaming tutorial. And I hope you find it very helpful. I recommend that you watch the whole video so you don't miss anything, but remember that you can always jump to a specific part of the guide just by clicking the timestamp or chapter in the description below. Now let's get to it. You may have already seen my unboxing of the AYN Odin Pro and maybe even my review. I therefore do not intend to go through any specifications or hardware showcase in this video, but rather I intend to explain where to start and how to get going with emulators. <laughs> The very first thing you should think about is what you want to use your new Odin device for. In my case it was retro gaming, so I'm going to start by showing you how to install emulators. Emulators are the software or apps that plays your game. There is a jungle of emulators out there, so I plan to quickly line them up and tell you which one of them I use and where to find them and how to install them. For older and easy to emulate systems like NES, SNES, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance I'm using RetroArch. RetroArch is an emulator frontend and not an emulator per se. Frontends are not emulators. What frontends are is software that will allow you to access all your ROMs or games from a convenient interface and allow you to start the appropriate emulator that will run those specific games. RetroArch is a bit more advanced than other frontends however since it lets you tweak everything and even download emulator cores that will run your games. I could easily dedicate an entire video to RetroArch alone, but I won't. Instead, Retro Game Corps has done exactly that already. I will link to his RetroArch setup guide in the description. RetroArch is available for just about any platform out there and you can get it straight from Google Play Store. I do recommend getting it from the official RetroArch site, however, since it seems to be updated a bit more regularly there. For PlayStation 1 I'm using DuckStation. It will require that you have a BIOS file. I'm recommending the scph1001.bit for that. Speaking of BIOS files, I realize now that I should have explained that earlier. BIOS files are necessary system files for some emulators out there, like Sega CD, PS1 and PS2. These files are copyrighted, so you are on your own to find them if you can't dump the BIOS file from your own system, but a quick Google search should get you on your way. For Nintendo 64 I'm using M64 Plus FZ Pro, there are both a free version as well as a paid version on the Google Play Store. I'm using the paid version as it removes ads and also provides cloud saving and some netplay features. It's a one-time payment of 4 euros. For Dreamcast I'm using ReDream, it's an excellent Dreamcast emulator and the one that most people tend to use. It's free from the Google Play Store but you will need to upgrade to premium version via one-time purchase of 6 euros to be able to upscale your resolution, which you want to. I'm using Drastic for Nintendo DS, not much to say here, it's just an overall stable and good emulator. It's a paid app however and you will get it from Google Play Store for 5 euros. For PlayStation Portable or PSP I'm using PPSSPP which is a free emulator with an option to purchase a gold version just to support the developer. However, there's no difference between the versions. Now we have reached the hard to emulate stuff. For Nintendo GameCube and Wii I'm using the same version of the popular Dolphin emulator and that is the Dolphin MMJR version. I'm using the version 1.011485 version which you will need to download from GitHub to install to your Odin. Both GameCube and Wii games are very demanding to emulate, so you will end up needing to go into each individual game and configure both the controls and the graphical settings. Since each Wii game has unique controls, you want to see what combination works best for you. Nunchuck plus Wiimote, Horizontal Wiimote, Classic Controller or even GameCube Controller. I have a separate video showcasing my different controller layouts for Wii games, so if you need help on that specific part, check out that among my other videos. 
For PlayStation 2, I'm using Ether SX2, which is the Android version of the popular PC SX2 emulator and is available in the Google Play Store for free. PS2 emulation is exceptionally tricky. However, the Ether SX2 developer recommends a Snapdragon 845 or equivalent device with Adreno GPU for best performance, which is exactly what the Odin has. I have a showcase video where I go through the best overall settings for this emulator as well, so go check out that when you're going to to play your PS2 library. The Ether SX2 emulator requires a BIOS file as well and the one I'm recommending is SCPH9001. Last but not least I'm using Citra MMJ for my Nintendo 3DS games which looks and works a bit like the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii games. I told you about frontends when discussing RetroArch, and the fact is that there is a handful of frontends that can bring together all of the standalone emulators I mentioned earlier and showcase your games in a visually beautiful and easy accessible way. The one I tend to use is this, it's called Launchbox and there's three different versions you can get. First there's a free version that has a limit to 100 games, second there's a $10 version which removes the game limit but you won't be able to download future updates, and lastly you can get a lifetime license for $25 which is the one I have here. And one last time so that it's really clear, a frontend is not an emulator. Launchbox in this case can be set to stylishly display the game's box arts and then open the emulator that you have set to open that particular game or game type, but it's not an emulator. To be able to store games and software on your Odin, a micro SD card is needed. My suggestion is at least 256GB, but it works with less or more as well. I have seen people who use 1TB in their Odins. The first time you insert your newly formatted micro SD card into your Odin, Android will automatically create a folder structure for you. So just put it in, take it out and insert it to your computer. As you can see here, this is the folder structure I was talking about. Create a new folder here with a name that you will remember, like games. And inside that folder you can start by creating a folder named ISOs and then you will just put the ISOs that you might have for your emulators in that folder. In here you will also create one folder for each system that you plan on getting for your Odin, like NES, SNES and so on. In this example I'm gonna transfer my dump of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 for PlayStation and I'm also gonna add the ISO for that emulator. And it's gonna take a while to transfer the game files but when you have done that just pop the card out and put it back in your Odin. Back on our Odin fire up your emulator of choice. I'm using DuckStation as you know by now. And the first time you start it up it's gonna ask you where you have your games. So press add game directory. And then you want to go up to the left corner to the menu. And here you have your Odin's internal memory and the micro SD named disk. And here you will find the same folder structure that I've been talking about before. So go into our new folder games press PSX where we have the Tony Hawk game and allow the emulator to access the folder. I'm sorry about the focus issues here by the way, I hope you can uh, see it anyway. And when we try to start a game it's gonna ask us for the BIOS file and we have that in the folder as well. So click yes and uh, go back to the folder structure by clicking on the disk again and games and our ISO folder and click it and OK. So the game is going to boot up just fine and we finally have our first retro game installed. However, you're going to notice straight away that you won't have any working controls except for the pre-configured touch controls. So we're going to have to change that first. And in this particular emulator, and this actually applies to most of them, just swipe from the left corner and that will bring up the emulator's settings menu. And the first thing you want to do is auto hide the touchscreen controller so it won't have that overlay over the game. And then you will go to port 1 and here you will change to analog controller and perform automatic mapping. And what that will do is that it will bind all those PlayStation inputs to your Odin's physical controls. 
And just like that you can now control your game with physical controls. Most of the standalone emulators, if not all of them, will let you configure overall controller settings as well as graphical and other settings in the emulator settings before you even start up a game. But they will also let you customize settings for individual games. That is handy for the harder to emulate systems like PS2 and GameCube since different games needs different tweaks. The by far most popular question I get on basically every video I upload is if I can share my Wii and GameCube settings. So I intend to do that now, but the bad news is that there is no perfect settings that would work for all games. As mentioned before, you're going to have to tweak your settings for just about every game. I will show you my settings for three of the most popular requests, and that is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for Wii, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker for GameCube, and Super Mario Sunshine, also on GameCube. Once you have saved settings for a game, you won't have to do it again at least, it will stay saved to that game until you change something again. And now I will simply scroll through my settings for these games, so pause the video whenever you need to. Now, the Odin is not just a great retro gaming device, it's perfect for Android gaming as well. And here I'm playing Pokemon Unite, which I downloaded from the Google Play Store for free, and then I've used the Odin's built-in key mapper to decide which physical control will do what in-game. And the same thing in COD Mobile. COD Mobile do support external controllers, however, for portable playing it's obviously more convenient to be able to play on the go without needing to bring another controller. To reach the key mapper just swipe from the right and select key adapter. Here you will see how I have mapped my buttons, but you can choose a layout that suits you. You need to tweak the sensitivity of the thumbsticks to get it to work properly. I have a video out on how to map your inputs for Android games, so check that out if you need to. Now, some of you might of course also be interested in game streaming, I mean, who doesn't want to lay in the bed playing Elden Ring? I'm gonna show you the two methods that I use, Moonlight Streaming for PC games and PS Play for PS4 and PS5 games. As usual, head over to the Google Play Store and download the app Moonlight Game Streaming. Open it up and you will be treated by this message. So you're gonna have to go to your computer, download and install GeForce Experience and then head to settings and go down to shield 
and from here you're gonna see the option to enable game stream and when you have done that you can go back to your odin now that we have enabled that we can find our computer in the list so tap it and start the pairing you will get a code that you will have to put into your computer so do that and the pairing will start now you will be able to play all the games that you have currently installed on your computer but i want to play elden ring so i'm gonna open steam and try to update it And just like that, I can now play Elden Ring from the convenient place of my bed, or whatever. You can change the controller layouts as well, should you want that. And lastly, I'm using the PS Play app for PlayStation streaming. It's an app that you can download from the Google Play Store. It basically works the same as Moonlight Streaming, but you use it for PS4 or PS5 instead. You can of course change controller layouts here as well if you want to. And I actually have a separate video for this among my other videos. So go check it out if you want to learn how to play PS5 or PS4 on your Odin. And that's been it for this video guys. I hope I have gone through enough for you to get going with the three types of gaming that you can expect to do with your Odin device. And that is retro gaming through the use of emulators, Android gaming, as well as game streaming from your PC or console. We have gone through some of the most popular emulators and some of the settings that I use for them. I have said it before, but I say it again. I have many other Odin videos in my channel where I go through how to map Wii motion controls and best settings for PlayStation 2 games games etc so go check them out after this if you want to also make sure to leave a like if this video helped you out and please let me know what you think in a comment or tell me if you think i missed something essential consider subscribing if you haven't already and thanks a lot for watching